Okay, so here we have Mr. Dan Derizio, eight-time Springfield Club champion, Columbia Country Club club champion, and a whole list of successful amateur tournaments. I'll go ahead and play this swing back one more time so you can have a look for yourself. And now I'm going to go over just a couple key aspects of a swing of what makes it repeatable as well as unique. So we'll first start with a setup position here. Nothing really out of the ordinary. This ball position is just slightly forward of, of center. And I believe he's hitting a seven iron here. Let's go ahead and play his swing back. And we'll stop right about here. And what you may notice here is that he has both his arms extended away from his body. And there's no bending of either one of these arms. That gives him good extension, good uh, good opportunity to create some leverage and some speed in his swing. Um, you also notice that the club doesn't really get too active. He's allowing his his body to turn his shoulders and his and his hips to take this club back. All right, so now as he brings his club up to the top of the swing, there's really nothing complicated going on here. He's just continuing turning until his body wants to stop turning. And one thing that, that stands out to me, it's a, it's a good thing for most amateur golfers to do is I want you to pay attention to his, his weight shift here. And just notice where all his weight is going into his body as he takes his club to the top of his backswing. And hopefully you saw that almost all his weight's getting planted into his right side. You can see it by one, just taking a look at his head here. Now it moves right of that line I drew. And if you still don't see it, take a look at his left foot. Watch how it comes almost off the ground and also moves towards his right foot. It's just evident of how much weight he's distributing to his right side. Okay, that's not something you teach. Um, but again, it's not uh, obviously not a huge flaw in his swing because on the way down, he plants that weight back into the left foot. It's almost like a trigger. Some of the uh, older school players actually lift the left heel off the ground and they initiate their downswing by planting their weight back into that left heel. Nicholas was famous for doing that. Okay, so he starts to swing down. He plants that weight back to the left heel. And he's starting to drive off of his right side here, off of his right foot. And as he's coming down in an impact, you'll notice how much uh, shaft lag it's called here. How much lag he creates in his swing. I'd say characteristic of most good ball strikers. And what's even more impressive is that when he comes down to impact here, how he has that shaft lean forward, how he has his left wrist out in front of all parts of his body here. That's just something you see uh, over and over again with all good ball strikers. As he comes through the hitting zone here, here's where things get a little unique. You'll see a big collapse in his left arm here, and you'll see a lot of um, uh, hand flip after impact. And it doesn't really matter because the ball's already gone. But it's caused from him keeping his head and his eyes glued down to where that golf ball was for much longer than what's conventionally taught here.
So it's almost impossible to keep that uh, that triangle we hear about. It's almost impossible to keep this triangle going when your head is staying there and resisting your your chest from turning. Okay, but again, the ball's gone. It's not critically important, and he's still able to complete his swing and come up to a nice bounce position here. Okay, so we'll watch it one more time. Gets good extension away from the ball, both arms pretty straight. He's lowering his weight into his right side. And when he comes on down, he's replanting that weight into the left side while pushing off the right. Really drives hard into the ground. Keeps that head well behind the ball. Beautiful impact position. And the uniqueness. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, so now we've got a, what's called a down line view of Danny's swing. And I'll go ahead and put a target out of where he was aiming. It was right in between our red and blue flags down here. Okay, I'll go ahead and play the swing out so you can see for yourself. Right, so he gets just a, a small little push there, about 15 feet out to the right of his uh, intended line here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in his backswing. Again, he takes his club back. Well, I'll take that back here. I found something new. All right, so when he takes his club back, yes, he's keeping his arms and hands extended. He's trying to get a uh, good width away from his, uh, his body. He's trying to get his hands away from his body. He's gonna. He's trying to get what he calls a uh, a deep turn, where his shoulders are turning, uh, and his arms and hands are staying away from his body. But what I just saw, what helps him do that, is here. I'll draw this red line again. Okay, so here's a shaft plane. When Dane takes his club back. It's subtle, but you'll notice that his hands, the grip end of the club, the shaft, everything goes underneath that original shaft player line that he created at address. Okay, what that does is it allows him to keep the club head more out in front of his body and not let it, the club head get flat or around him. Because generally when people take the club back with very stiff arms, or I shouldn't say stiff, but very extended arms, I see that they have a tendency to get this club a little too flat or behind them. Anyway, he brings this club up to the top of the swing, and he has what's considered a, a steep, steep position up here up top at least with his hands and arms, not so much the club of the shaft, but his hands and arms. And because they're a little bit steep, he's going to have to make a little correcting action to flatten them back out again. Okay, and it's a subtle move, but you'll notice, and we'll call this the top of the swing here. You'll notice in the, in the, to initiate the downswing, he's replanting that weight into his left heel, but he's also dropping his hands or dropping the butt of the club down towards his heels. Okay, and that's a, an effort to get the club from a steep position to a more neutral position. So he's a little vertical, a little steep on the way back. And he's flattening it on the way down to get into a more, more neutral position. Let's see how he is an impact. Again, Danny likes to keep his head down 
his eyes glued down to the ground for as long as possible so it's not going to allow his chest to rotate to the left it's not going to allow his chest to open up so now to correct that he swings his arms hard around his body and lets his right shoulder bring his body up you see that with a lot of good ball strikers not so much that they they'll keep their head down this long but a lot of good ball strikers swing that club well to the left most nobly uh, Dustin Johnson you'll see him do a very, a very similar action here into a nice full balance position I did see one more thing I wanted to point out to you viewers out there that's going to help everyone I'm going to draw a line against his backside here. I'm going to point out a good aspect of his backswing, and that's how he creates some extra depth. So he's got very efficient use of his lower body. Whenever you get into a position where you're balanced from the start, and as you bring the club on back, your trunk is on the left side here where it started. You're doing a good job. But on the way down, there's where Danny could use some work. So when he has a move off of this red line on the way down, he's essentially getting, he's moving the mass of his body towards the ball. In his instance, he's moving his body towards the ball. What it does is it kind of traps in his um, his right arm from getting in front of his body. So when your right arm gets trapped like that, you, you get what's called stuck, which you hear on TV all the time. Um, so when he's stuck, the shaft tends to get a little bit flat. Well, that's his mistake. I have to get the shaft a little flat. And, you know, it's not drastic. And you can correct it by swinging hard to the left, but you know, his misses are generally pushes. Um, and that's why. So again, you, know, you, you might see it a little better if I drew a line uh, against his forehead here. So watch as he goes back, he creates good efficient use of the hips. He's getting a lot of weight on his right side. But on the way down, now his body's moving towards the ball. You see, even his, even his head has moved towards the ball. So his entire body's moving towards the ball. That's going to trap in his arms, particularly his right arm and his right elbow from getting out in front of his body. When that right elbow has more freedom to move in front of the body, it's much easier to keep that club from getting too flat or too far inside. Okay, so this has the illusion that the shaft is right down um, the plane line, but it's really not. Okay, you'll watch this club head swing out to the right, and you'll see that ball instantly go to the right. Okay, so now he's come off that line against his butt. Now you might see it a little more clearly here. Now the club gets a little flat and swings a little too far out to the right unless he really swings hard to the left. Unless he really swings those arms, hands, the club at everything hard to the left, he can hit a push. But again, it's not drastic. I'm being nitpicky. I think it's worked pretty well for him, so Good job, Danny, and uh, hopefully this has helped you learn a little bit about the golf swing.